and welcome to Trip to the Mound. We are the iBaseball Channel podcast. Roy Giovanoni joined as always by Mike Lacoste. Beautiful Monday morning out here at the iBaseball Channel studio. And of course, there's a whole lot of stuff going on in baseball right now. <laughs> so, you know, we're going to jump right into it. And mainly this first segment is, is a lot of wisdom from the pitcher's mound. I mean, again, a lot of the stuff that we saw over the weekend really is relevant to pitchers themselves. And again, within that, there's some bigger truths. But let's, you know, let's start here out west because one of the bigger, and I think it's a un- very under-the-radar story this year, is the reemergence of Jared Weaver and how it relates to the Los Angeles Angels' success this year. Yeah, uh, Washington pitch, uh, I believe, the other night. And, uh, you know, he's a... Uh, He's a mechanical kind of a wreck guy, a guy that's way across his body, uh, kind of jerks his head when he throws the fastball, I noticed, but really doesn't do it when he throws the other pitches. But what he's done, and remember, he was a guy that uh, when he came to the big leagues, he was throwing in the upper 90s. And he, you know, gradually as time goes on, you you wear down, you, you, you come out of that uh, throw as hard as you can, as long as you can uh, mode. And now you see him... <laughs> in this, uh, I guess, this velocity spectrum from, I'm not kidding, down in the low 60s, I believe, or mid-60s up to 90-91, which, you know, the 90-91 looks 95 when you're looking at a 60-mile-an-hour curveball. And he he really messed with them because, you know, location is another part of it. But, uh, yeah, it's quite a... It's quite a, an art, a, a pitching phenomenon to watch him pitch because he's not a, a straightforward, you know, all the cliché type fundamental uh, type pitcher. You wouldn't teach somebody to pitch th- the way that he throws. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, I mean, overall on the season, he's 17-8. and eight, But most recently in his last 17 starts, 10-2, and 3-3-5 ERA. And again, this is around the time – that the that the I almost said Anaheim Angels again. I always got to check myself on that. But this is the time that the Angels really created a lot of distance between them and Oakland in that AL West race to this point. Yeah, there he's you know, he stepped it up. He's been a big winner for him in the past, but to do it, he 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 did kind of fall off and tail off a little bit. I think he got hurt. His lower back was hurt, and he's bounced back now and got back to form. And then and then some. Uh, tip of the cap to him because he's doing it with. <laughs> what, what most people or scouts would say with less stuff, yeah. basically. Yeah, and, and again, Mike Sosha, even recently, the Angels were in the middle of that 10-game winning streak that they just had snapped yesterday, yeah. but Mike Sosha, after that last start, said that it was really almost the best he'd seen him throw in about five years. I mean, it's just really coming around and having this resurgence. And, and again, it's really big to what's happening to them going towards the postseason. And while we're talking about L.A. pitchers, again, we did, you know, we got to reflect a little bit on this weekend's Giants-Dodgers series. It was a very interesting one because it started out with a kind of a big roundhouse from each team on Friday and Saturday, respectively. It kind of turned around, though, in a hurry, didn't it? It went from one end to the other end. And- yeah. Yeah. Ending up with the Dodgers getting the uh, upper hand yeah. on our on our Giants, and then the sun and Sunday's game was pretty much what you would expect from a from a Clayton Kershaw performance. It was going to be one of those tight run games, and, and at that, Yusmero Petit really did throw a pretty good game, minus a, yeah. a couple of key errors. Could have gone either way. They 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 played well against him, matched up pretty good. Uh, just the blowout with Tim Hudson and and uh, Lincecum, that really kind of let the boy I'll bet that was a downer up yeah there for all those 43,000 plus Giants fans and whatnot because I'm sure they were thinking as a lot of people were you know hey might win the series now you knocked them off in a pretty hit them pretty hard you know in that first game and they boy they just came right back but I told you they're dangerous you know the Dodgers are a dangerous team because of the amount of these individuals that they have it's just that part of them come with a lot of different type of baggage yeah and again if you remember to last week's podcast one of the key players that we talked about in this equation was Matt Kemp and I think Matt Kemp was definitely one of those guys that showed his worth over the weekends especially in Saturday and Sunday's games you know yesterday he had that big two-run homer and he's even Mike Kruko commented on the game yesterday he's like he's you can see the way that his hands are moving through the zone that he's just he's dialed in in a very good tune right now yeah too bad for the Giants but yeah, you know. 
Yeah, they there's still more, there's still a few more games. left. Yes, there are, and still, and the by all means, the NL West is is not a done deal for either team, and and it looks like both are still moving towards the playoffs. And one little interesting note: we did talk about both Weaver and Clayton Kershaw. If these guys both continue as is, because again, Jared Weaver's leading the AL and wins. Kershaw's tied for the NL lead in his own right. But if could be the first time since 1985 that. An AL and NL both had most wins represented by guys in the same general region, you know, and, yeah. the, and the last guys to do it was Dwight Gooden and Ron Guidry when they were doing their respective leading for the. Right, I wouldn't have got that. But yeah, a little I bit. Was, you know why? Because I'm thinking now what's going to be like if there's a freeway World Series. Oh, yeah. That would be pretty crazy. Yes, it would. Yeah. And then it's one thing I did want to kind of pick your brain on yesterday. There was an interesting little moment during yesterday's Giants-Dodgers game. And again, this is where we get back to that pitcher's wisdom. It's the eighth inning. There's one out. Clayton Kershaw's just faced Joe Panic Again, it's that lefty-on-lefty matchup. He's got two righties that are coming up in the form of Buster Posey and Hunter Pence. You see Don Mattingly come out of the dugout at this point. And, and again, it's, in most cases, when you see the manager coming out to the pitcher at that point, it's usually to signal a pitching change. See a little conversation takes place where it looks like at that point – Kershaw reassures him and says, you know, I'm I'm good to go. And and Mattingly, you know, he keeps him in there. And then, of course, as he's walking away, you see him give a little shake to his head. And it's one that I think is it wasn't really defined as to he wasn't upset. It wasn't anything. It was just a shake of his head. And and sure enough, Kershaw continues the inning and strikes out Posey on three really nasty sliders, including the last one in the dirt, and then gets Pence to fly out. Innings over. Yeah. But again, it's an interesting you said that there's kind of an interesting dynamic that sometimes happens at this point in the game between the manager and the starting pitcher. Yeah, and there's a number of things going on. You know, the manager has to be able to motivate the players. Uh, and, and in this case, they're the front runners in their division. So there's that pressure. And then he's also uh, got to stay on top of a lot of other things. The, the actual, you know, the physical well-being of, the, of this guy, uh, for sure. Because I, I can tell you right now that nobody uh, with this kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, I would say that nobody, in fact, most pitchers in the big leagues are not going to say, yeah, I'm done most of the time and just hand over the ball and walk off and be happy about it. Most of the time, guys are competitive. You know, they got a lot of competitive, uh, you know, fight in them, spirit. And uh, a lot of times the, uh, you know, the mind doesn't, uh, is not thinking well out there you know your the instincts are to stay out there and compete and, and sometimes you're blinded by what the right decision is until you get to a certain point for most guys in their career where they can they have the ability to step back and think about it and make the right decision not based on testosterone natural <laughs> testosterone yeah and competitiveness and so forth and so on but but actually based on really how you feel, where you are in the season, uh, the team, is the bullpen rested? You know, do they need a night? Uh, there's a lot of things they take into consideration, you know. And then, of course, uh, most of the time the manager's coming out there for not more than one reason, believe it or not. He's not coming out there just to say, oh, I'm just checking on him. I'm going to look at him in the eye and make sure that he looks me back. And I he convinces me that, you know, he's okay. But, yeah, that's part of it too. But, uh I think what he's doing is working, and the reason I think it's working is what you just said. Him, your Kershaw, kind of just kind of shaking his head, like you know, what's he doing out here, or why was that necessary? Well, and then you saw what happened. He, it's a psychological motivating tool he uses to to fire him back up to say, you know, you you don't. He, and I'm sure later on he, said, he probably he's down there because they they had some words the last time he pitched. He took him out. He didn't want to come out of the game. You know. Yeah. So you know, he, there's probably they. They've probably got this little cat and mouse thing going right now. And uh, your guy, Donnie, uh, is playing hardball the way he knows how to play and the way some skills that he's developed, you know. And I'm sure he, he – I'm, I'm telling you, bro, he's got to be a good manager to handle all those different personalities and, and all the different aspects of the game today and the press and everything. You know, everybody – social media, everybody knows everything. And, you know, they're all geniuses, you know. And yeah. I just think it's, it's more of a – a lot of it's – Making sure, number one, that he is protecting the, his best pitcher, and the be, you know the best pitcher in the game, maybe, and uh, for sure that he's protecting. He's not sure, you know, he's got to be one hundred percent sure that physically he's okay. 
and and then he moves on from there. Yeah. And you know, and he motivates him to the point where he's like, "Well, I'll show him I'm okay." Yeah. You know, well, and, and maybe it, he won't come out the next time if I blow these next guys away. Yeah. But well, and not it, true. He's going to keep doing that if he's getting the good results. You know, he's smart. He's he's smart like that. Well, and they so. said uh, kind of a, upon reading a little further into it, one of the things that happened was that prior to that in the inning before, Mattingly walks up to Kershaw in the dugout and he t- and he tells him, I can get panic. Now, what happened that there was this point of confusion to where Mattingly looked at it as him saying, I can get panic. And then afterwards, you know, you kind of make your move from there. And, and Kershaw even admitted, he said, I didn't communicate that thought as well as I should have. You know, he kind of thought that once I told them that I could get the lefty on lefty matchup, that that meant it was time to make the switch from oh. there. And so he said, but again, at that point, even that you could tell Kershaw the way that he kind of lit up a little by Mattingly coming there. He wanted to show him that he that he made the right call and keeping him in there and the way that he handled probably two of the hottest hitters in the Giants lineup again on that lefty-righty matchup after that, again, shows why he does what he does. 